Hi. In this lesson I would like to talk a little bit about how to conduct a ritual. Um, rituals are typically used when you need to either collect energy from various sources or over a period of time. Um, so for normal healing work or normal divination work you wouldn't need a ritual. But if you were to attempt a very complex healing um, or very powerful healing or also with the reading to go into a very complex uh, matter, it can be necessary to do a ritual. Another reason to do a ritual is that you want to perform an initiation. An initiation is that you are making somebody a part of something greater. So you're in a way connecting uh, the individual to a source of knowledge or power or energy. And this is also generally best done in a ritual uh, form. So before we can start a ritual, we need to do a cleansing. Uh, the reason for this is that rituals by nature amplify energies. So, um, for instance, if I have a little bit of frustration or anger within me, uh, then usually it's not of a level that it would bother me or anybody else. But if I go into a ritual space where energies in a way cannot flow out anymore and become amplified and also attract other energies which are of the same vibration, then my anger might be amplified a hundredfold. And um, that way it can harm me, it can harm somebody else, it can attract uh, spirits or other beings which you don't want to have in your ritual space. So ideally, before you would bring any object or any person into a ritual space, that person or object should be cleansed, should be purified so that the space is kept pure. Um, another important thing is the harmony. Because energies in cannot escape the enclosed ritual space. If the energies which you bring in are not harmonious, then yeah, within the ritual space it can become a very uh, polluted, conflictive, chaotic energy. And you don't want that to happen either. So ideally you also want all the objects to be in harmony with each other and also all the people to be in harmony with each other. You can also harmonize them once they're in the space for instance, by uh, making music together, by singing mantras together, or singing songs together, um, by holding hands, by meditating together on the same object. These are all methods of harmonizing people and their energies. But we'll start with self-harmonization. Um, what I like to do is in a way to work from the inside out. In this process. So before I want to start to work on myself, I want to purify myself so that there is no disturbing influences anymore, so that once I solve a problem it should stay solved. So step one is I focus on my heart. And there I try to go as deep as possible into the core of my heart. I'm looking for the divine spark there. So a very bright energy, very luminescent energy, so bright it almost hurts. And I want this spark to create a ball of golden energy within my heart. And then this ball is growing and growing and is pushing all the energies which are not in harmony with it not in harmony with my divine spark, are pushed outward. So you let it grow until it encompasses your chest. And then let the ball grow even further so it starts to pressure the energies up out of your head and downward out of your belly. And allow this ball to grow slowly but surely. 
and things which are in harmony, which are in concert with your spirit, they can stay, or they can come even. But all the other things have to leave from your body. And eventually your whole body will be encased in a big golden egg which came out of your heart. Now we want to make the egg a little bit bigger so that also my entire aura will fit in this egg. So, once I've removed the energies which are not in harmony with my spirit, I can start to align my own energy body and my chakras. So, I will just go step by step and see if any chakra is somehow unbalanced or in need of something. Uh, because also all the needs of the chakras also attract various energies. and. When you're conducting a ritual for somebody else, you don't want it, you don't want to attract the things which are good for you, you want to attract the things which are good for your client. So ultimately you have to be satisfied, you have to be content and complete to be able to conduct a ritual well. So I'll start with the first chakra, the base chakra. And try to feel it. Do you feel a good connection with your body, with the ground, with the earth? Does it need anything? If that's okay, move to the second chakra. Feel if there are desires. And if you do feel desires, see if either you can meet them immediately and give the energy which you need to yourself or make a deal with that chakra and say like okay maybe later after the ritual I will give you what you need but right now stop pulling, stop desiring, stop working with that energy because right now I want to do a ritual. So with my second chakra it is now quite restless, destroying the pulling energies some of the energies I can give to myself, so a little bit more support, a little bit more love, more faith, more confidence. And that helps, but doesn't remove it. And to the other things, I say like, okay, maybe tonight we can work on that. We can feed you, you can stabilize yourself, you can become content. Right now, relax and cooperate. Same with the third chakra. So feel what it needs. See if you can generate the necessary feelings or emotions of, in this case, of safety, of stability. Feed them to your own chakra. And the other things postpone. The heart chakra. The throat chakra. Third eye, and finally the crown chakra. So once all these chakras have been more or less fed, nourished and balanced, 
it's important to also make the contact between them, the prana tube which connects all the chakras, to make sure that that is also very open so that the energy can flow through the entirety of the body. So spend some time feeling this connection which runs just in front of the spine like an axis through the entirety of your body. Make sure that it is straight, otherwise just move the chakra a little bit forward or backward to align it. So then we come to the energy balance. When we are working in a ritual we want to keep our own energy stable. So as I've uh, also talked about in some other videos it's important to put enough life force in your hara point below your navel. So concentrate on that and put enough life of your life force there. This should really be a strong stable foundation. For your energy body. Don't put all energy there. You will need some energy around the shoulder areas because you will be using your hands and arms in an energetic manner. So there needs to be enough energy for your hands to work their magic. What you can also do uh, is to amplify the effects a little bit. You can burn incense, sandalwood, sage, as some of my favorites, Palo Santo is also quite nice. And um, these are also methods of charging your own aura or your own energy body with those energies. Um, other options would be indeed to spend some time with your crystals or uh, at the base of an uh, relatively elder tree and also absorb those energies which are very harmonizing, very stabilizing uh, to help you to be able to conduct the ritual in a better manner. So, once you have prepared yourself, we can move on to the next video and start creating the space.